Exactly. Uh, Mr. Hartle, uh, could we start out uh, by getting a little bit of background information about you? Uh, who were your parents and uh, were they uh, native to Montana? No, my parents uh, uh, immigrated from Germany uh, around uh, 1900. And they moved to Salt Lake, Lake City first, and then to Butte, Montana, where they spent most of their life. Uh, after the, he was 25, uh, he got here when he was 25 years old. Do you know the reason they settled in Butte? Not really. I. Uh, my dad liked rugged country, maybe offspring of being in crowded Germany or something. And uh, uh, Butte was unsettled enough that he thought it might be a good place for his. He wanted to be a fruit better and set up routes as centering in Butte. And he had food routes all from a two-day trip through the Big Hole and through Bannock and Dillon and back to Butte. And he had other one-day routes from from Butte to Whitehall, Three Forks, where he would buy trade fruit for eggs and honey. And which were scarcer in the big hole. In those days, he'd get a good price for and potatoes, different things that were grown in that better, you know, smaller, better climate. And the big hole was his main main route and uh, way to sell his fruit and vegetables. Well, what were some of the uh, fruits and vegetables that he sold, and uh, how did he get around? Did he have a car? Yeah, he uh, he bought. It was a quaint old. A lot of people don't even know Oldsmobile made a truck, but it was a big, uh, possibly a three quarter ton, and it had that old cab that came in a big circle, and a tall windshield and open sides. And uh, maybe there were curtains originally for it. We didn't even ride in the curtains. But we rode this old Oldsmobile truck all through the big hole and, and rough trips. This uh, my worst memory of the fruit trips was that stretch from Dillon over that flat heading for Butte. And before you got to Glen, it was a long, long, it seemed like forever, rough, rough road, dirt road, we used to go over every week. This trip was made once a week. Anyway, that's why he, uh, I think he wanted to, he liked the independent life of uh, being, working for himself, and he wanted to be in a real unsettled country yet, you know, I mean, as far as uh, availability, fruit, vegetables, and he ended up knowing most of the ranchers, people still, I run into people still. He quit the business about uh, 15, 20 years ago. But you'll run into people all through the big hole in, in these different places. Remember Otto, his the
Hamilton and, and Darby uh, was a, a source for early berries, and they raised things there that when it was un, you know unheard of raising around Butte. It was it, that I think the valley's four thousand, and it's a whole different climate there. People love it. And I was just talking to a, a guy out there from Darby. Darby used to be a, a favorite town of mine because it's settled nestled in the mountains, beautiful. But the Big Hole Valley was my basic uh, love. I like to go back every year. I go back all the time back to Butin. I mean, from Butin to Wisdom and fish up in the corners of the valleys. It's been great. You uh, said a little bit earlier that the fruit uh, came into Butte on the train from California. Uh, did your dad go down there once a week or once a day and pick out what he wanted? Three or four times a week. He'd want to get it fresh, get fruit and vegetables. And, uh, it was a business that you had to move fast because you bought it that day and then you had to drive it through these valleys in the summer. It uh, didn't last long on a, a truck, no refrigeration and that. So it, it, had, it all had to be done systematic and fast. He, my dad would get up daylight, five in the morning to go down the warehouse. They opened those that early for, and there used to be uh, several old Food betters were operated out of Butte uh, competitively. Farmer, I mean, uh, uh, one better, Jones was his name, is all I remember, but he used to be our very <laughs> tough competitor. <laughs> but there wasn't much competition other than that. It was, it was a, good in, a good little business, and uh, we picked, I remember as a boy, be in these uh, root cellars at, at Waterloo. It was a great potato country. They'd have these root cellars. He'd have me down in. The, we'd sort. We'd buy potatoes cheaper because we could. We'd sort out for the farmer. He'd and we'd do it. Sack these potatoes and eat all truckload after truckload to Butte and use those all winter to sell. That there was so many angles to the buying and selling that fruit. And he, he he got so he knew them all. He made good money, but he gambled. <laughs> you know, you wide open gambling, and in the winter there wasn't much fruit peddling going on. And he'd end up, and he'd start getting involved in games, gambling. Well, what were some of the uh, things that you remember about Butte? Uh, I'm sure that uh, you must have uh, come across miners at some point. I uh, I was a miner. I uh, I worked the mines for three years before the World War II, uh, and I worked during the war because he had uh, you know you stay you could stay out for uh, as long as you worked the mines. When I quit the mines, then I they, they grabbed me for the navy. But that uh, uh, the miners at that time. Butte was going full blast. All these mines were rolling good. Mountain Con. I worked in the St. Lawrence mainly. And I had a brother in law that was a miner. Oh, what exactly did you do in the mine? Well, there was this uh, little different jobs in the mine. There's, uh, you can be a motorman. With, uh, a motorman takes these little trains for miles underground from the stations out and in. The, uh, the miners needed, they'd get in there from a night before blast. All this ore would be laying on the end of the tunnel. And that ore had to be loaded and brought out to the station and dump and shot up to the surface. In the meantime, there'd be one cage. They have, it's like uh, offset elevators all the time. One, Use them to come down, go up with safe power. I wanted to be hauling ore up and down and be hauling timber down. We take these timbers and into the miners and and uh, let them get started. 
and we all over around there for several hours and then bring them all the supplies they needed. And it was, uh, in those days it was considered a rotten job, but at the same time nobody wanted to quit the mines. They, they, they made more money than anybody out in the, in the farms, three times as much as a, a guy working at the ranches, which I done. I worked hay fields and big hall. I worked Melrose. When I was 15, I left home. I went through the eighth grade is all, and uh, uh, I went to work for a farmer in Melrose, Howard Jones. And, uh, but uh, it was, the, uh, from there I went into the warehouse, Safeway Warehouse in Butte, Montana. They, they brought watermelons in and frozen lettuce from the Imperial Valley. And I had a job loan those well, getting back to why I talked about mining and working these other jobs. Any other job, you have to work eight hours. And you're constantly having it work. Miners love that job because the harder they work, the quicker they were done, and they got to relax. And in Butte Mines, they had uh, usually this hot and cold spots. There was always some tunnel that was just right temperature. And these miners maybe get tired. Maybe they'd been out the night before. They'd go to this tunnel and lay out leggings. And maybe it's two hours before quitting time, three hours. If they finished by noon, they they had to be down there, but they would, they didn't have to work. They'd, uh, and the ship boss, the boss would come through. Did you get through all the holes filled, everything ready? They'd, they'd drill the holes, tamp the dynamite in, usually about 12, I think it was around 12 holes. Drilled six feet, tamped with dynamite, put the fuses in, and each fuse was set at a different length to go out one before the other. The centers went out first and then it worked outward. These were all cut to the exact length and tied in a, a little knot and ready to light. And you could only light at the exact right minute when you got off ship, so you'd uh, have nothing to do between you go lay on and they, they had these planks four by twelve, four by eight, they call them lagging in the mind. Go find your lag and go to sleep. <laughs> well, uh, what kind of things did the uh, miners do for entertainment uh, after they got off? Oh, most of them drank like, oh, drank crazy. I, uh, that's probably part they, they talked about mining bad for your health, but the miners drank like fish. The uh, they'd go down to the bars, and the bars would be open all night. Uh, they had uh, an Atlas bar on Park Street, the old Atlas bar, and it had uh, you could go in there after work. I'd get up on night shift, two in the morning or one o'clock or whatever, you could go in there, and this is a fact, you could order a beer for 10 cents and get a free shot. Your third beer, each beer was 10 cents. Your third beer, they give you another shot. And you could be totally drunk on $2 at $1. I mean, after working in the Mines, you take a hot shower and you go down there, that hit you harder. But uh, one dollar would get you thoroughly drunk. And that's a lot of their miners' entertainment. That's what the biggest thing was. You mentioned uh, going into the Atlas Bar. Do you, uh, what do you remember about it? Do you remember how it was furnished? Uh, what kinds of uh, things went on in there? It was a very long bar, and it was a, a busy place because of the price. And uh, the miners used to 
even drink free there because the bartenders would like these collected rocks. The miners packed it was automatic packing out if they found any pockets of gold, fresh, you know, good pockets of uh, rich rock or pretty rock. They'd hoard it down there, and the miners carried out the prettiest stuff out of the mines over the years. And any, even the Anaconda Copper got. Uh, they trade these precious rocks for drinks, and they could come out with a bucket full of. of Rocks, either sell it to the bartender or sell it to some people who was collecting it, and they they drank that way every night. They drank. They were an awful drinking bunch. Are there uh, people that just uh, frequented the bar just to get these uh, rocks and, and stuff? There was a lot of that. Yes, people knew people that wanted to collect rocks knew where to go for it, and. Uh, uh, my relatives, uh, most of them, worked in the mines, and a lot of old timers there. And uh, this uh, one nephew worked in the pits after, and they'd come across big. I got a most beautiful rock. It was all different types of metal in it, and just this one big piece that weighs about thirty pounds. And he says he broke that out of a piece that weighed half a ton. Yeah. Give him away, he never sold them. And that, a lot of precious rock went out of you that, not that way, of, but uh, that's all under the bridge. Uh, uh, about what year did you start working in the mines? Uh, about uh, 1939. And I worked there till uh, early 40s when the war was on. Uh, 